Hello, my dear STR YouTube viewers, myself Dr. Palni Raman from Professor IK MD current team, a practicing pediatrician from Tamil Nadu. Today's topic for discussion is seizure mimics. We all know paroxysmal events are very common, particularly in children. They can be fit or a faint or a funny turn. Seizure is one of the important paroxysmal event accompanied by electrical discharge in the brain, whereas seizure mimics are paroxysmal events without any electrical discharges in the brain, abnormal electrical discharges in the brain. Why this topic is very important? Because the prevalence of seizure mimic is as high as 30 to 40 percent in the community compared to the prevalence of epilepsy which is less than 1 percent. So that diagnosing seizure mimic is very important to prevent unnecessary investigation and unnecessary anticonvulsant medication. That is the importance of this topic. So of the objective of this topic is mainly to create awareness about the important seizure mimics across all age groups. How to differentiate a seizure mimic from a seizure? The distinction is purely clinical. The first and most important is the detailed history taking and particularly the setting in which the event occurred as is very very important. So the questions like when did it occur? Where did it occur? How did it occur? All are important. As well as if the video recording is there, it is a very good source to confirm it. Sometimes if not possible to differentiate a video EEG will be helpful to differentiate the both. Coming to the common seizure mimics, we face in day-to-day -day practice. Number one is syncope. The important thing is we need to differentiate is it a fit or a faint. Syncope are brief fainting attacks which have a three P's. They have precipitating factors. They have a prodrome and a lack, lack of postictal state. The precipitating factor can be a dehydration following a diarrhea, fatigability following a viral fever, or a lack of sleep, and a prolonged standing. These are all the precipitating factors. And usually they have prodrome in the form of light headedness, blurring of vision, nausea, diaphoresis, and followed by a brief event, loss of consciousness and loss of postural tone and with complete rapid recovery within a minute. So that is the speciality duration is less than a minute. So these are the syncope, this is the way to differentiate. Only important thing is the cardiac syncope which is very less common but there the prodrome will be absent. So that is the difference between the regular syncope and the cardiac syncope. Cardiac syncope occurs only in exertion at the peak of the exertion. They can be associated with breathlessness, palpitation, etc. The second important thing is the breath holding spell. If it is prolonged, can lead to reflex anoxic seizures. Breath holding spells are common in the six months to one and a half years of age. They occur in the setting of anger, frustration and when a child is uh, asking for something and the parent or parents are refusing for it, they go for the spells. It can be a blue spell or a pallid spell and blue or cyanotic spells are very common. Usually these babies goes for a prolonged cry, stops the respiration at the end of the expiration, mainly during expiration, they stop crying, goes for apnea and cyanosis. 
if it is prolonged they can go for reflex anoxic seizures mainly having a loss of consciousness limplessness and with this brief clonic jerks mainly due to iron deficiency is one of the common cause replacing iron with iron supplements can be useful with respect to breath holding spell what about pallet spell these are not common mainly occurring during the painful situations like a head trauma or head banking or im injections here following a short cry they go for pallor and limplessness and here also they can lose consciousness and the lose the tone and finally they can also go for simple jerky moments at the end of the episode coming to the third important thing is the psychogenic non epileptic seizures also known as hysterical seizures which are very common in the adolescents as well as the adults in the third decade usually they occur in front of the people and the consciousness usually is not impaired they keep their eyes tightly closed when you try to open the eyes they will again resist by uh, opening the eyes they can be associated with the motor movements mainly the involving the trunk or head in the with the bizarre movements from side to side movements as well as limb movements like convulsions not obeying the anatomical rules in the form of the convulsive movement of the right upper limb with the left lower limb or left upper limb with the right lower limb and not associated with injury or tongue bite or incontinence and the duration is prolonged unlike a seizures which are very short brief associated with the screaming or emotions and video eeg will be normal so above three are the very common seizure mimics but there are n number of seizure mimics now i'll try to enumerate the important seizure mimics across the different age groups coming to the neonate benign neonatal sleep myoclonus is very common brief myoclonic jerks involving the focal or multifocal occurring mainly during a sleep state and it can be aborted by making the baby awake in a nor neurologically normal babies and eeg is normal and usually this stops on its own by second month of life going beyond the neonate into the infancy shuddering attacks are very common sometimes parents feel frightened whether it is a seizure usually there is stiffening or posturing or shivering of the upper limb as well as the head along with the lip tightening as well as the clenching of the teeth associated with some vocalization sometimes which can be without loss of consciousness and it is easily distractible it can be aborted by distraction mainly occurring in the setting of happiness excitement food and anger also usually this will settle over a period of time by second year or a third year of age even in the infancy in a developmentally abnormal baby a condition known as sandifer syndrome with a dystonic posturing or aphistotonic posturing of the head neck and back mainly following a feeding is very common which can mimic a seizure going beyond infancy going to the toddler age group the very important thing is the self gratification behavior or infantile masturbation here what happens they go through the repetitive movements of the lower trunk in the form of pelvic thrusting or adduction of the thighs and rubbing the thighs together with the moaning or grunting with hyperventilation mainly in the setting of boredom and like uh, the babies and the parents are really worried the, like uh, see, because of the masturbation like behavior and they can be easily aborted by distraction so this is a common self 
gratification behaviors which is occurs in the toddler age group. This also settles over a period of time. Then another group of disorders very common in the toddler and the preschool group are mainly the sleep disorders which can mimic a seizures occurring in the sleep in the form of nocturnal frontal lobe epilepsy or a benign Rolandic epilepsy. Mainly the confusional arousal or sleep terror or a sleep walking which occurs during that phase 4 or NREM sleep. Usually child starts sitting from the sleep completely confused with or without autonomic symptoms, with or without screaming for a brief period of time and again goes to the sleep. Sometimes can also have walking in, the, in that state also and usually unaware what is happening in the next morning also. How to differentiate it from a seizure? Usually the epilepsy, nocturnal frontal lobe epilepsy or Rolandic epilepsy starts at the onset of the sleep whereas this occurs, the sleep disorders occurs in the NREM sleep after a period of 1 to 2 hours. And second thing is the epileptic events are very brief and short lasting for minutes but less than a few minutes whereas this is a little prolonged, the sleep disorders are a little prolonged. Now coming to the last, the school going age group, certain seizure mimics are very common. Number one are ticks. Ticks are nothing but repetitive, purposeless, involuntary movements, mainly localizing to one muscle group. For example, ocular group in the form of repetitive blinking or repetitive winking or oral group of muscles in the form of grimacing or head and shoulders shrugging, repeated shrugging are repeated head slanting, these are all the ticks, but they are suppressible. If two are ticks along with the vocal ticks are mainly there, then it is a, known as a case of Tourette, Tourette syndrome. Then another important thing is mainly the non-epileptic staring spell or pseudo absence are common in particularly a children with ADHD or autism, sometimes in a normal children also. Also it is also known as a daydreaming. In a setting of boredom or in a setting when the child is watching the TV or sitting in the classroom, there will be completely a staring spell, mimicking an absent seizure, but can be interrupted by a tactile stimuli or vocal stimulation, but not by waving the hand. This is the way we can differentiate both and EEG is naturally going to help in differentiate the both. And last but not the least, many movement disorders like paroxysmal kinetic dyskinesias, non-kinetic dyskinesias, dystonias are common in the school going age group which can mimic seizures. So friends, so far you would have heard about plenty of seizure mimics, very common which we have to try to diagnose properly. Why? Because unnecessary investigation will be prevented, unnecessary CT, MRI will be prevented, unnecessary anticonvulsants will be prevented, a simple parental reassurance of the natural history of the disease by explaining the natural history of the disease and can really settle the issue in plenty of the cases. Thank you very much. Hope you are enjoying the steer group of videos. Thank you.